There we go. So once more, welcome to our resumes and cover letter session. As we are arriving in this room, uh, what I'd like to uh, ask you to do is to let us know that you're here today. Uh, and my colleague Monica, who is uh, also from the Center Institute of American Career, she's here today with me, and she will be monitoring the chat room uh, for most of this session. So she has put in the chat there uh, the link for um, uh, for you to let, that let us know that you're here today. Uh, and this is really important. Uh, once I can share with you the PowerPoint presentations after the end of the session, but also it help us guide the services that we offer uh, to see when is the best time to start offering services to students. So if you can just put on the chat done once you complete the um, this this attendance, I will make sure that I know to to move with our session. Awesome. Thank you, folks. So here we go. So uh, just one minute. Okay, so I would like to start this session. Um, since this um, event is um, tailored to international students, right away, I would like to share some of the um, most uncommon questions that I have from international students when it comes to writing uh, resumes and cover letters. So the first one here is you can use your preferred name if you have one. So if you would like to use it, it's fine. You do not need to use your legal name on your resume, your cover letter. They are not legal documents. So if you'd like to use a preferred name, go for it. There's no problem at all. Now, as an international student, you probably speak another language. Um, my suggestion to you is that you can add uh, your, uh, your, your language if you if this is a part of the job requirement or it's an if it's an asset uh, to the position so let's say for instance the company that you're going to be working for has a branch in or the headquarters in another country and you know that language so that would be an asset so then you can go ahead and add that information um, you don't need to say, uh, sometimes I see students, they say fluent in, in English, that's also not necessary to include that information on your resume. You are going to UBC, so that information, you know, the employee would already assume that. Okay, so what else do we have here? So the next one is translate international experiences in Canadian terms, like money, distance, height, uh, and this is usually for international students that already worked uh, in their previous countries. Maybe they're here because they're doing a master's degree and they wanna talk about that experience. In that case, what you wanna do is, let's say, if you manage a budget, um, and I will use the word, the, uh, the money that we have in Brazil just because I'm from there, so the money that we have there is um, PIs, so let's say, for instance, if I manage a budget of 100,000 reais, then I want to make sure that I translate what does 100, uh, so if what um, 100,000 reais mean in Canadian dollars. So that will give an idea of uh, to an employer of how much money you have managed in the, uh, in the past. That goes as well for distance uh, and, uh, and height or you want to make sure that you know if you're an engineer and you're talking about that you uh, build a bridge that was um, five kilometers, you know, um, in distance. Then you want to make sure that Canadians will understand that the, what kilometer kilometer is. Okay, so another few things here about resumes is that we don't add pictures to it, um, so you should not be adding it to your resume. You don't need to mention that you're international students. Sometimes I see uh, resumes from students saying, you know, uh, on their objective, I'm international students looking to develop my skills in Canada. No, you don't need to say that on your application. Also, uh, you do not want to include any personal information such as your C number, your passport, or your nationality. Um, and that, um, you know, 
in fact, you know, so this is your personal information should only be giving uh, your, your C number to employers once you have, um, once you have um, uh, a contract, right? And do not add this information uh, on your application. In fact, it is kind of a red flag if you are connected with an employer and they ask you to send all this information ahead of time without giving a contract. So I would suggest don't, don't do that. Okay, so now let's talk about um, how you're gonna go about writing your um, application. Right, so how do you go about writing your resume and your cover letter? So the first thing that you need to do is research. So you need to understand uh, who is the employer and also the job that you're applying for. And I'll say at the first moment when you are um, writing your application, the most important thing here is to really understand what the job is about. Right. So what are the skills? What are the requirements? What are you going to be doing on that job? So it's one of the first steps. And then to uh, help you write a more um, interesting cover letter or a more powerful cover letter, doing research on the employees is also really important. One question that I, last, I, ask to, I like to ask my students when they come for a resume or cover letter uh, workshop or appointment, I like to, I ask to ask them, um, what is it, what do you think, you know, if you close your eyes and you imagine yourself doing the job, what are you doing? And if the student's not able to explain to me what they're doing in the job, they don't have a clear understanding of the job. Then four, it would be really difficult to write a cover letter or a resume that will tailor to the employer's need. And that's really important. Each cover letter you're going to write needs to target the employer and the job that you're applying for. Resume, what you could do is have a template, for instance, let's say you're applying for three different types of jobs. You're applying for a job as an HR assistant, a marketing assistant, a co coordinator assistant. So in this case here, uh, you could have a generic resume for each one of those positions that you could adjust here and there according to, the, uh, according to the job that you're applying for. However, your cover letter needs to really target the employer. The idea of writing one resume, one cover letter that, would, um, that you could apply for any employer, it doesn't work and won't help you get an interview. So, you know you have a good resume and a good cover letter if you're getting job interviews, right? The job of the resume and the job of the cover letter is to help you get an interview. So if you're getting interviews, then you know that your resume is strong, your cover letter is strong. If you're not getting uh, job interviews, then you, you might have to start um, tweaking a little bit your application. However, I say that with a grain of salt because um, we are in a different scenario, economic scenario right now. Uh, we, we are living through a pandemic. So job search opportunities may be a little limited right now. And that would be uh, the reasons why uh, you're not being called for a job interview. But that's the main job of your application is to get you a job interview. Okay. So here we go. That's the next slide. So now we're going to start um, jumping to uh, writing accomplishment statements here. So this is how you would write your uh, application. So um, when you are building your resume, usually you're gonna go and talk about each of the experiences that you have that were relevant for the job that you're applying for. So those experiences could be any previous work experience that you have, even if they were part-time. It could be volunteer experiences. It also could be uh, any work that you have done or any activities that you have done with 
um, your student association or clubs at UBC, any core curricular activities that you wanted to um, showcase to the employer. And I want you to keep in mind when I'm saying that showcase to the employer, all that information needs to be relevant for the employer, right? So keep that in mind when you are crafting your application. Always ask yourself, is this information useful for the position I'm applying for? And if it's not, you may decide to not include that on your application. But when you are, uh, when you are describing that experience that you, um, that you have, uh, what we'd like to say is that choose to describe them as an accomplishment statement rather than the duties of that activity that you have. So sometimes, um, you know, uh, what I most see on students' um, resumes, applications, is that they might say, for instance, they work as a part-time barista, right? Then when it comes to uh, describe the experience there, they would say something like um, received payments for clients, or they would say prepared coffee, um, you know, to, to clients as well. So as an employer, I kind of have an idea what you do as a barista. So I would refrain from talking about the duties of that job, but actually talked about the accomplishments that you did in that position. So maybe as a barista, you were able to develop excellent customer service with your with your customers, with the clients that are coming in, and uh, you know you know you knew their names, you knew what kind of coffee they liked in the morning, and then that expedites the um, you know your service, but also uh, make sure that clients felt satisfied and they always come back, and when they come back, they want to be served by you. So that's an accomplishment, right? And this is how I would suggest that you go about talking about um, the things that you have done in your, on your job. So I have some examples here. I think as I, I was talking, you had the time to, uh, to read them, but let's just analyze one of those sentences here. So the first one that we said, so tickets for events, right? Uh, so not very powerful statement there, very basic. So now let's see how we could transfer that into an accomplishment statement. So what we have there is organize one month marketing campaign by scheduling groups of volunteers to run shifts for a promotional booth, which result in selling over 450 tickets to students. That's a more comprehensive sentence, right? And I know that you sold 450 tickets, right? So you give me the numbers there and you're telling me how you have done that. So now as an employer, I'm confident um, now that you can organize a marketing campaign, for instance, because you are giving me a little more information rather than saying that you just sold tickets. Now, there's a technique for how you can write accomplishment statements and I'm gonna share it with you now. So to write the um, accomplishment statement, what we suggest is that you use the verb, the task, and results. And results here is a value that you can provide to the employer. So that could be outcomes, it could be goals, numbers, as we saw on the previous example, metrics, feedbacks, feedback, or skills that you have learned. Now, um, one thing that I want to say about the sentence here is that the verb, if you are uh, doing this job right now, like if you're still volunteer, if you're still working or still being part of a co-curricular activity, you want to use the verb here in the present tense. And if you are not, if you are done with this activity, if you're done with your work or, or volunteer activity, then your verb would be on the past tense. Try to use a variety of verbs. So you don't want to say um, organized, organized, organized with your, you know, all your bullet points. You want it to be using their verbs that will start your sentence with a different verb, but also would describe the activity that you, you have done there. Now, I found, for instance, that details, like the results of your sentence, is the most important part of your application, of your sentence. And I'll explain why. 
So I work in a unit at the Center for Student Development and Careers, uh, and um, there are five more people in the same role as me as a career educator. So let's say, for instance, if we all we are all writing our uh, applications, right, our resumes, and if you're just we are just using the verb and the task, we may not be able to different ourselves to the employer, because if I say offer facilitated webinar to students, uh, reviewed resumes and cover letter, practice interview skills with students, this is something that I am doing, and also my colleagues at the same role is doing as well. The way that I can differentiate myself here it is by giving an employer the results of what I have done, right? And that results for me will be different from my colleagues. And this is how I can stand out and craft my application. So really uh, take the time here to work on the results of your sentence. Things that I like to do uh, to make sure that I have enough information on my sentence here. I like to ask myself, for instance, why did I have to do that or how I, 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 did, I did what I did? Because that will give me uh, enough uh, information to provide the results for my sentence there. Okay. So now I want you to take a few minutes here and practice writing an accomplishment statement. So uh, what I, wouldn't, I want you to think about something that if you if you're proud or that you feel uh, you know that you were in the flow when you were doing, you were excited about it doing. It could be from a volunteer experience, it could be from your school, it could be from work. And I want you to try to write your verb. Uh, sorry, and I want you to try to write a accomplished statement using the verb, the task, and the results. Now, I'll give you a few minutes here. Let's say about actually just a minute, uh, just in terms of this workshop. I want to keep moving. So take about a minute to write a sentence. And if you'd like, uh, you can send to me in the chat. Now we are a large group today, so I may not be able to read them all, but folks can either send privately to me or to the entire group, and I can read a few and provide feedback. So just let's take a minute here. Uh, Juliana, can I ask a question? Sorry, I muted myself. Yes, go ahead, please. You mentioned you can we can also use feedback in the result. Do you have any example for that? Yeah, that's a good question. So let's say, for instance, you were, uh, you know, um, uh, it could be a, cost, a feedback from a customer that you received. Uh, maybe a customer went to you and say, you know, uh, the reason that I continue to come into the store is that because of the excellent customer service that you're providing, right? So then you could say, um, you know, um, you received feedback from customers by providing excellent customer service, something on those lines. But also could be something your boss or a colleague have said about your skills. So let's say, for instance, you were uh, very familiar, you are very familiar using Excel, right? So every time someone has a question, they come to you because you know how to use Excel. If Excel is something that is important to the job that you're applying for, you might want to say that, that you know, you have heard from your colleagues and bosses that, you know, your skills in Excel is really advanced, something on those lines. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, awesome. So now I will, uh, you know, folks are feeling courageous and want to share their uh, statements in the chat. I will read a few. So I see here it said, let a team of 10 consultants in technology transformation project implementing a service now solution to help save 
$50,000. Yeah, that's a very good one. So good job there. Um, you might want to clarify, for instance, what service now means uh, to the employer. Uh, and uh, But that's a very good one. So developed a program to reconstruct mission spatial reference data using Python and, oops, sorry, I missed another content came up. Uh, using Python and QGIS. Fantastic, that's also really good. And I am, um, is, is there anyone more here? So there's one more about doing construction site visits every day uh, in a 25,000 meter uh, area project. So you might wanna do, uh, provide a little bit more information there uh, what is the reason why were you doing those site visits? Is that you want to make sure that um, things were safe in the site or that um, you know you're doing site visits to make sure that they are uh, they are they were following the uh, requirements of the project. So maybe provide a little more of details there. But all the things that are coming up here, they're really good and thank you very much for um, sharing them with me. So just for interest of this session, I'll I know that I have received more sentences here. Uh, at the end of the session, if we have time, I'll go back to them and provide feedback. But just for interest of time here, I'd like to keep us moving. OK. So here are some other things that I'd like to share about uh, uh, resumes, about format and design. So most uh, resumes are written in a reverse chronological format which means that your most recent experience is in the top of your application, right? Followed by the, the least um, recent um, activities that you have done or jobs that you have done. So that's the most common used format and is actually the preferred format by employers. There are other formats of resumes, but for the sake of this, webinar and for in, in, in our name of time, I'm just gonna stay, I'm stay with the reverse chronological resume format here. So um, so we suggest that you have one to two pages of resume maximum here. And uh, so one to two pages. And usually what I would say, if you were a, you know, a student on your first years, and you don't have a lot of experience, you haven't done a lot of volunteer, it is okay to have one page resume. You do not need to have, you know, two pages where, you know, you know, or getting your font really big or spacing so you can have two pages, one page is fine. Um, I do have a personal preference for one page resume for students, but employers will accept two pages no problem. Just make sure that if you are going to have two pages of your resume, make sure that the second page is full as well. And it's not just like the first part of the, the, um, the paper is complete. So you want to have some, um, some information there. One thing that we suggest for students is sometimes, you know, you may not have enough information to fill up one page of your resume. You can add interests and hobbies there to make sure that you have more content to your application. So we do not include references on our applications anymore. That was a trend that was part of the past, but nowadays you do not need to write references available upon request. It's kind of a given that an employee will expect that you have references when you are um, applying for a job. Check your spelling there, and you can see that uh, you know there is uh, 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 um, um, uh, a, a sad face there uh, for the spelling, so it was on purpose. So uh, what I wanna say is that um, make sure that you double check um, your applications to see if there is no spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes on your job or on your resume and cover letter. There's a few tips that I like to do when I'm writing my resumes and cover letters. One is I like to use a Grammarly and I don't know if folks are familiar, there is a free version of Grammarly that you can use. I put in the chat, uh, if you haven't heard about it before, it's called Grammarly. Grammarly. I think that's the correct spelling, Grammarly, but it's something on those lines. If you go to Google, you should be able to find that information. 
So I like to use Grammarly and uh, to check for spellings and also for um, also for spelling and grammar mistakes. And uh, I also um, like to, when I finish my application, if I can have someone else taking a quick look at my application, so as a second person reviewing my application is always really good and important. However, uh, if I can't, um, if I don't have a second person to read my application, one thing that I like to do is I like to select my application, change the font. So if I'm using, let's say, uh, Arial, I change to Calibri. If I'm using size 11, I change to 12, just to trick my brain that the information that I'm about to read is something different. Just because when you read the same document over and over again, your brain gets so used to it and you miss some spellings or grammar mistakes there. So I like to do that to trick my brain to, um, to think I'm reading something new, uh, to catch any spelling or grammar mistakes. Um, or another preferred way, another way that I do and I like the, the better uh, is by printing the application and then reading in paper, right? Because again, tricking the brain to, um, to think I'm reading something new and then I have more chances to, um, uh, I think, so I, I like to think that, sorry, I was just reading the message, so why I'm a little confused here. So yes, you can, there is a free version of Grammarly. You do not need to sign for the paid version. The free is really good and very comprehensive to check your application. And uh, so going back to the printing, I like to print so I can read it again and catch any mistakes that I may have made in my application. So I already said, uh, in, you know, if you're using, uh, to use the verb in the past tense, the past tense, if you're not working in that role anymore. Okay. So let's talk about headers here of your uh, application. So I have some samples here of different headers that you can use. Um, so normally what would you include there? You would include your name, your address, your phone number, and your email address so the employer can connect with you. Nowadays, um, address is not really um, necessary. So if you just want to say, you know, Vancouver, BC, or uh, whatever you are, uh, whatever you are, uh, is uh, no, no problem. You can just, you can just do that. It's up to you to decide to include your address or not. In fact, what I suggest is that if you are applying for a job and you don't know the name of the company sometimes there are jobs that you're applying for uh, that you may not you don't know the employer really well or you're applying to some to an agency and you don't know the employer I would avoid putting your um, address there okay so here uh, other things that you could add to your um, header is this is you know the advantage advantage option here is you can you know play with the design so you can add some color there you can be a little bit more creative however I would say with the limits you should know your uh, you should know your industry before you start playing with um, before you start playing with. Uh, uh, colors there on your application. And the reason is if you're part of the more um, conservative um, industry, right? You know, the design may not be a good option there than for you'd like to have uh, a more um, conservative design here. So another thing, and sorry, I, I move here a little bit too fast, okay. So another thing that you might want to add to your application here uh, is your LinkedIn. So if you have one, it's up to date. Uh, you can add to your to your line, and uh, and if you have any portfolio that you'd like to share as well, feel free to use that to to add to your application. Um, my suggestion here is that you follow the employers. Uh, suggest the employer's instructions when you apply when you're applying for a job so for instance if the employer says send your resume in a pdf format then send a pdf format 
If there's no instructions, always save your application in PDF so you can um, so you can lock the format of your resume. Okay, so here we go. And uh, another tip of uh, another tip here is that you can um, when you are applying your you, when you are creating your uh, resume, remember that your resume and your cover letter is your marketing tool, right? So it needs to look good. It needs to invite the employer to read that application. So um, you want to make sure that you are consistent with both documents. So you want to make sure that uh, you have the same font, the same margin, the same format for your resume and cover letter. They should be uh, the same um, the same format, right? So the same habit that you're going to use on your resume, you're going to copy and paste to your cover letter. And um, when you are submitting your application, you want to send, you want to save them together in one document. So first is going to be your cover letter, followed by your resume PDF and send to um, to the um, to the employer. Now there is a question there about the difference between cover letter and um, cover letter and um, resume. And I'm about to show you how to um, the differences between. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to cover letters now. So a cover letter, so the difference between your cover letter is that you are, on your cover letter, you are writing a letter to the employer, right? Uh, three, to five uh, three to five paragraphs max, I would say three is plenty, um, and um, three is plenty, but if you wanna you know, have more information, like to write five paragraphs, that should be okay. Um, and what you are doing here, you are, talking to the employer about this story. So the cover letter is an opportunity for you to tell your story to the employers. So on your first paragraph, usually what I like to um, include is who I am, what I'm studying, what are some of the past experience that I have, and what are the three, top three skills that I have for the job, the job that I'm applying for. So let's say, for instance, I am, um, you know, and for past experiences here, I'm talking to the folks in the room now that maybe are here at UBC doing a master's degree and they have already some years of experience from the previous country. So for instance, if you worked as a civil engineer for the last three years, then you might say, you know, I have over three years of experience, you know, as a civil engineer, here are my skills, right? So then you can give that information right away to uh, the employer. But if you are, uh, you know, if you don't have that experience, but it, let's say throughout your degree, you worked at Starbucks, you work in stores, and you have customer service, you can add that information as well. You can say, I have three years of experience providing customer service. So that information is also valuable to the employer. Now, the cover letter um, is the first paragraph of your cover letter is one of, is the most important cover letter. I'm sorry, it's the most important paragraph because that's the first information the employee is gonna read about you. And that needs to work as a hook. So to get the employer's attention so they can continue reading your application, right? So I would refrain here for saying anything too personal on this email, uh, on this cover letter. So um, do employers usually read, read cover letters before resume? So Vera, that's a very good question. 
Uh, and I would say depends. Uh, depends on the employer. It's hard to answer for sure. So we know that sometimes some employers go directly to their resumes. Sometimes employers, you know, take, uh, um, you know, read the cover letter before deciding to go to the, 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 the um, to the resume. And I have talked to the employers. I have, you know, talked to employers before, and they say like, "Sorry, I don't have time to read cover letters. I go direct to the resume." So we don't know for sure which they would, they're going to read first. So that's really important that we always have a strong resume and a strong cover letter. And one thing that I want to say as well is that if you were applying for a, uh, for a job, for a professional job, even if the employee is not asking for a cover letter, you do need to send one with your application, okay? All professional jobs that you're going to be applying now, you do need to um, write a cover letter. So going back to the first paragraph here, as I was saying, that's the most important paragraph. So uh, to just to extend on Vera's question is that employers are really busy and they don't spend a lot of time at first on the applications. They're pre-screening the applications. They're going very quickly through um, them to, to find candidates that they'd like to interview. So what I like to do here on my first paragraph is give right away the information the employer needs to know about me to say that I am a good candidate for this role, right? That I have the skills and the expertise to, um, to do this job, right? Sometimes what I see is students, they'll say, you know, uh, you know, they'll start talking about some personal experience they have. When I was five years old, I, you know, I always, um, when it's, I knew that I want to be an engineer. So when I went to UBC, I started to study engineer because I knew that I wanted to make new houses that are more sustainable. So that doesn't give any information to the employer about who you are and what you can do for me. So if I'm that employer that is very quick, like if I'm that employer that doesn't have a lot of time, right, to read your application, I read the first paragraph, I don't get enough information from you. I move to the next application, right? So Billy start with the information the employer will uh, value right away. Um, I'll put in the chat later uh, a link to the Center for Development in a website. Um, I'll put in the chat the link for the um, Center for Development and Careers website. And there, there are samples of resumes and cover letters that you can take a look. So here is the um, second paragraph of your cover letter. So on your second paragraph, what do you want to do here? You want to tell a story, right? You want to tell the employer how you have used your three top skills before, right? So what you're doing here, you are saying to the employer in the first paragraph, okay, this is what I'm studying. These are my previous past experiences. This is my three top skills that I can apply for this job. Now I'm going to tell you how I have used them before. Right. So if I am going to write about Python, right, that's one of my skills that I have for the job. Now I'm going to tell an example, a story of how I have used Python in the past. If my top skill is communication, then I'm going to tell the employer how I have used communication in the past. Right. So I want to really here to take this opportunity to talk to the employer how I have used those skills. Okay, so the third paragraph here is about the research that you have. Oh, okay, so that's a very good question that comes to the chat here. Um, I was going to stop, answer this question before going to the third paragraph here. So uh, if you were, uh, you need to address your cover letter, right? So in a cover letter, you're going to have your Heather, you're going to have today's date, and then you're going to address your cover letter to the person that's going to be reading your cover letter. So if you know the name of the person that's going to be reading your cover letter, then you can add their name, their position, the name of the company, and the company's address, right? If you don't have uh, the information of the person that's going to be reading your cover letter, if you don't know their name, then you can say, dear hiring manager, dear hiring team, right? Uh, if you, if you, and then the name of the company and the address. Now, if you do not know, if you do know the name of the person, 
uh, I would say only address them by a title if you really know how they'd like to be addressed, right? It is okay to say, dear Juliana de Souza, right? But it's not okay to say, Miss Juliana de Souza, if you do not know how I'd like to be addressed, right? To figure that out, you can give it a call. Uh, you can call the company and say, I'm writing a letter to Juliana. Could you please let me know how she'd like to be addressed, right? If you can't find this information, just saying, dear Juliana de Souza is totally okay. Now, going back here to the third paragraph um, of your cover letter. So um, usually what I do here with my third paragraph, so remember that I said that you can have three paragraphs to five paragraphs on your cover letter. So sometimes what I do um, I might combine, if I'm only having three paragraphs, I might combine the research I have done in the company with the story that I'm telling, and then I have the closing, right? Sometimes I'm having five paragraphs, and then I would have two paragraphs about the examples of the skills that I have used in the past. So I'm telling two different stories, three different stories to the employer there. And then I have a paragraph about the research. Now, uh, Sometimes what I like to do with this, no, sometimes no, what I usually like to do with the research is that that research needs to relate to me, right? I cannot just say, for instance, to the employer, I know that your company is really big. I know that, you know, your company is well known in the market. I know that your company provides excellent customer service. That's a generic statement. Right, like the employer would like, okay, I already know this about my company. Why are you telling me this again? So the information that you found about the, the employer related back to you, right? If you read the company's mission statement and then you really identify with the, their mission statement, tell that to the employer. How did you, you know, through my research, I was reading your, cost, your company's mission statement. You know, I appreciate how your company put clients first. I would like to share that I also share the same, um, you know, the same um, approach or the same mission, because when I was working as a barista at my previous job, I always make sure that I learned the name of the clients that were coming in and made sure that I would greet them and provide the best customer service. So now you're relating those informations here. Okay. So that's really important. Do not just mention facts about the company, mention how you, the company relates to you. And then your last paragraph here is um, closing, right? Your application. And then what you're doing here, you're showing your enthusiasm for the job and you are asking um, for a, a job interview. So usually what I would say, I would um, you know, say why I'm really enthusiastic about this position. And I would say, you know, I would, I would welcome an opportunity to interview with you to say how I could potentially um, to say how I could, you know, potentially benefit your company. Any questions about cover letters? As you think about questions, one more thing that I want to say here is that usually um, if the information that I have about the company is really strong, right? I might put that on my first paragraph to get the inquiry's attention. So let's say, for instance, I, you know, I went to a fair and I met with someone during that fair, and we have, a, you know, we had a very good relationship there. And um, I might want to start that putting that on my application as well on my first paragraph there, just to show the employers how I have, uh, uh, you know, connected an employee in the past. Now, one thing that I want to mention as well is that every time you are adding people's names to your cover letter, you do need to have their permission. So let's say, for instance, uh, you know someone working for a company and they refer you to a job. They say, Juliana, you know, uh, ABC company is hiring. I think you'd be a good candidate. Uh, I recommend that you apply for this job. So if that's the case, uh, what I could do here is say to that person, is that okay when I'm writing my cover letter? Can I refer you to this? Can I can I write your name on my application? And if they say yes, then I can um, I can uh, write 
uh, on my first paragraph, following up on so and so's referral, I'm applying for ABC job because that's a strong endorsement that I want to employ know right away when they read my cover letter. So I'm going to pause here, see what's coming up in the chat. Yeah, so there's a question in the chat here. Uh, how could I ask for an interview without uh, with, with, without looking too pushy. So one thing that you can say is that I welcome an opportunity to uh, interview with you. You could say, for instance, uh, you know, uh, if you have any more questions about my application, please feel free to reach out to me uh, for an interview. So those are a few ways that you can write about asking for an interview without seeming to desperate or pushing uh, for an interview. So there's another question here in the chat, uh, and the question is, how much time should one put writing a cover letter in general? Find a strong value proposition for the three and uh, third and fourth paragraphs can be quite time consuming. Sometimes quality of applications can, can help you land a job faster. Quantity, okay, no, sometimes quantity of applications can help you land a job faster. Okay, so that's a very good question. Uh, and I would always prefer quality over quantity. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's very clear to the employer if you have a generic resume that you are using to apply for many different positions, right? Uh, so, you know, and then if that's the case, employer says, okay, this person not really committed to my company or they're not really interested in the four, I'm not going to spend my time interviewing this person, right? So I would say that, um, you know, I, I don't want to give you that time to how long you should take to write your cover letter, but if you're, you know, it will take the first cover letter, the second cover letter, even the third one will take you more time. But the more you start practicing writing it, the faster you're going to become. And sometimes you, it is okay, you know, I said in the beginning that you do need to target your application, and this is correct. You always need to have a cover letter that's going to tailor, it's going to be tailored to the employer's um, job and needs. However, you could have, for instance, a master cover letter with a few examples there that you can take as you're starting writing a cover letter for a new job, right? And that can help you save some time as well. I hope that was helpful. And Sean, if you have any uh, follow-up questions, please, please feel free to put in the chat. So how are in advance should you start applying for, oops, second, the question, another one come up and then bumps the other one. So how early in advance should you start applying for full-time jobs before graduation? It's not a, a good question. And I would say, pay attention to your industry, to the industries that you're applying for, because they usually will, you know, have a strategy for applying for uh, hiring new grads. Some companies, um, start the hiring process, you know, the year before hiring for uh, summer new grads. Sometimes they will start the application in January. So what I would say is really pay attention to, to the uh, hiring process of the industry that you are interested. Uh, if, uh, if you can find that information, I would say if you are applying for jobs, you know, that are not for new grads. So for instance, if you're in school right now, right? Um, let's say it's January and you can only start working full time in March, in, um, in May, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to apply for a job that's being posted right now because, you know, you can start working for, in, you know, until May. However, what you could do, Ryan, you can start doing your network right away. Start connecting with people in industry, asking for information interviews so you are connect with folks in that industry. So I have another question here. When you write your accomplishment statements in your resume, I imagine this should be similar to what you write to show the two top skills. Do you have an advance uh, to, uh, do you have an advice on how to not be repetitive? Nisha, thank you for that question. So on your resume, you are a little bit more brief because you don't have this space. So usually your, um, the sentence, the bullet points on your resume should be two lines long. If you have three, four, your sentence is too long, you need to start cutting it back, right? So what I suggest here 
is that you, um, uh, what I suggest that you do here is that you look for, um, uh, to write a, 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 a paragraph on your cover letter, you need to give a little bit more details of how you're going to write that story. So you have more space to say how you have done it, if you're working in a group, what your role in that group. So what I suggest that you use is the START technique. So the START technique uh, I'm going to put in the chat is what we call the situation, the task, the action, the results and the transferable. Transferable means what you, you have learned from that. What you have learned from that um, from that scenario, right? What you have learned that you could apply for the, your next your next role. So that's a better way to describe um, your two top skills there. Uh, okay. So there's another question there. Can I start my cover letter without addressing to someone? No, you should always address your cover letter to someone. If you know who's gonna be reading your cover letter, um, then you wanna say, dear Juliana de Souza. If you do not know, then you wanna say hiring team. You can say hiring team. Um, you can also say, um, um, you can also say hiring manager as well, but you always want to address to someone. No, you do not want to say sir and madam. Um, with, you know, instead of saying sir, madam, you can say uh, hiring manager or hiring team. So there's more questions coming up here. So let me just take a quick look. Just give me a second. So there is a question about cover letter templates. I would refrain from using a template just because the cover letter needs to represent who you are, right? It needs to show your personality. So I would refrain from using templates. Maybe to start, you can use a template, but then when you are done, go back there and review your cover letter to add your own language, your own um, experience there. So, um, more questions coming. Okay, so there are questions here about a gap on your uh, application, right? So uh, you were in school, so I wouldn't worry about any gaps on your application. So if you were, if your last job was, you know, when you started school, uh, is that four years ago? Don't worry about it because that'll be clear for the employer that you are in a, you know, you were in university studying, you were acquiring new skills, so that should be okay for you as a student. So uh, let me see here regarding the resume. Okay, so there's a good question here in the chat. How about someone who graduated and looking for roles? I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, I think employers are aware uh, that you graduated, um, that people are graduating a scenario that uh, is the COVID, where there's a, a little bit less job opportunities. So I wouldn't be um, too concerned about any gaps there. Now, you know, gaps of six to three, six to three months, even a year, it's okay. If it becomes like a two-year thing, then I would start getting some ways of expanding those gaps. Um, you know, but one thing that you could do is you could start working on a on your on a personal project, right? Uh, and then you can use those personal projects to um, describe how you have spent your time while you were job search. Okay, so I will um, I will say I will stop the recording for now and say thank you for folks that attend our session. We have completed the webinar. Uh, however, I will still continue taking some more questions here.